Welcome back Guardians. Destiny tweeted yesterday an image of Queen Marasov and Osiris announcing the new season starting August 24th, Season of the Lost. We also have an announcement stream by Bungie on the same day right before this season launches. This video is intended to give my quick lore reaction to Marasov and Osiris being in the next season and primarily focus on the important aspects of Marasov's lore, such as the curse on the Dreaming City, Osiris planting the seed and Mara's message from Season of the Hunt. Once again, big thanks to the hive mind that is Twitch chat for helping with this video. I will also be live streaming my reaction to the Bungie stream on the 24th. Twitch link will be below. This is Marlin Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. I'm going to skip Mara Sov's origin story and jump straight to the Awoken battle with Oryx. In my mind, this is the beginning of Mara's grand plan, her grand scheme, which I'm hoping will be revealed in the next season. Before we get to the Awoken battle with Oryx, we need to briefly speak about the Dreaming City. Marasov used Riven, the last Ahamkara, to build the Awoken Dreaming City. She also used Riven to build her own throne world. Elysenia, or as you may know it, the Shattered Throne. When she faced Oryx attacking King during the Awoken battle, she planned to die to Oryx in order to try and enter his throne world. It is convoluted, and to be honest, I'll need to go back and reread all of the Forsaken lore. However, there are two main points that stand out. You have to remember that when Mara was a human, she jumped into a singularity during the collapse, which was caused by the collision of the light and the darkness. From there, she created the Awoken homeworld from her will and I don't know, space magic. When she talks about Oryx and his dreadnought weapon trying to destroy her, she almost laughs it off, saying, I have survived the inchoate primordial chaos before space and time. I, she's sort of saying this is nothing. I think the other main point is that she did construct her own throne world as well, using Riven. I believe her throne world was meant to be her escape plan, her way of returning to our plane of existence. She says this in the Reverie Dawn Greaves Law Tab. Joy wells in her heart when her searching fingers trace the edges of Eleusinia. She has passed through the desert. She has reached the far side of the chessboard. She is alive, or soon will be. This whole chessboard metaphor is important because in a previous entry, Tyrannicide 5, she says, When a pawn reaches the far side of the chessboard, it may be promoted to a queen. And what hatches when you promote a queen? What new board does she claim her place on? Right, so you can see how she reaches her throne world and says, I've crossed the chessboard, meaning she's about to become the queen, likely in opposition to Oryx being the king. So this was her plan. She was intentionally killed by Oryx's dreadnought weapon with a plan to invade Oryx's throne world, then have the guardians kill Oryx so she could take the throne. And then her own throne world was there to allow a safe passage back to the land of the living, I guess. Of course, her throne was trashed, hence the shattered throne. Oryx actually detected it and destroyed it before Guardians could take him out in the King's Fall Raid. The best description of Marasov's plan is in Tyrannicide 5 from the law book The Awoken of the Reef. Have a listen, it reads. She dances down the blade and steps into his throne world. The Harbingers give her the gate, and she takes the step. She's dead, consumed by Oryx. She's dead in his will, his ascendant realm. There was no other way inside except this true way. Inanna at least gave her people some warning. She told her minister to have her worshippers lament, drum, pray, and lacerate their buttocks. Inanna told her minister to beg the gods to save her. Mara has not. Instead, she has enlisted Eris and several million mad dancing guardians to go knock off the god who killed her. It is, on that level, a very simple bank heist. Get yourself taken into the treasury as treasure, and when the owner dies, break back out with his stuff. Right, so this was an elaborate plan to break into Oryx's throne world and steal the throne. Even though Marasov's escape plan is somewhat slowed by Oryx when he shatters her throne, it does appear that she was able to revive herself to some extent. In Forsaken, we interact with Marasov by entering the Oracle, but we don't really know if she's trapped there or if she's intentionally staying there while she continues her plan. 
Regardless, have a listen to the Reverie Dawn Bond, which seems to describe the resurrection of Marisov. It reads, She's home, but it is not the same. Shuro Chi has been taken, Kali and Sedia too, and Riven. She used to sit in the shade of those wings, laugh at the riddles that rumbled in that mercurial throat. This creature is all teeth and broken promises, transformed by the expectations of another scheming, secretive sister. I cannot stay here. These are the first words that pass through this throat. Her throat, though it shares none of the molecules that comprise the code of her former body. They scrape and ache as they pass through her lips. Again, if only to remind herself that she is alive. I cannot stay here. Right, hopefully you're still with me. Marasov was intentionally killed by Oryx with the hope to steal his throne and then return back to us using her own throne world. The implication being that these throne worlds are connected within the Ascendant Plane. Oryx not only shatters her throne, but he also invades the Dreaming City after the Awoken battle. And during that time, he took Riven, like made Riven taken, as Riven was still being held captive in the Dreaming City. We would then kill Oryx in the King's Fall raid, leaving the Taken without a leader. And so now we can move on to Forsaken. Savathun is in possession of Coria Blade Transform, the Vex mind that we just defeated in Season of the Splicer. Coria gave Savathun some ability to control the Taken because Coria had previously analyzed Oryx. Savathun would then meet Taken Riven and make a bargain. When Guardians completed the Last Wish raid, this somehow contributed to completing Savathun's wish, which resulted in the curse on the Dreaming City. It's hard to accurately describe all the mechanisms taking place with the Dreaming City curse, because the best information we have comes from the law book Truth to Power, which potentially could be all lies from Savathun. Regardless, I think this is likely the best description of the curse on the Dreaming City. Have a listen to the law entry as Sudem. It reads... I understand what's happening here. Oryx took the Ahamkara Riven, who then fell into Savathun's claws. She devised a scheme to use Riven as bait, by inviting Guardians into the Dreaming City, then focusing the will of a group of powerful Guardians upon Riven. She tricked you into making a wish, a desire to alter objective reality to conform with our subjective need to save the city. Riven fed on that wish in order to breach the Dreaming City's defences and invite Dal Inkaru inside. Dal Inkaru and her Taken are simply scouring the city for awoken secrets. You don't need to fret about any greater agenda. Remember that you face an agent of Savathun. It is to her advantage to make you see schemes and conspiracies everywhere you look. Right, Savathun would then use Coria Blade Transform to continually loop the curse on the Dreaming City. See my previous video about Coria for the full story. I will link it in the description below. While we battle the curse, we continue to visit Marisov in her court, traveling through the Oracle. Collectively, inside the Oracle, we witness what appears to be Marisov preparing to battle with the Pyramid ships. She is in communication with the Nine and also the Exo Stranger. We also see holograms of the Pyramid ships during one of the scenes. In the end, this is all left unresolved. Mara never leaves her court, and the Dreaming City curse technically has continued since Forsaken. So, seeing Marisov in the next season and considering we just took out Coria Blade Transform, I would assume we finally get a conclusion to the curse on the Dreaming City. Okay, now let's move on to Osiris and probably his most recent and most notable interaction with Marisov. Plant the seed. Strap in for some more confusing times. In the web lore, what gives me pause, Osiris steals a metal seed. We don't know exactly where he steals this seed from, but it could be from the darkness itself or the pyramid ships. Marisov will then tell Brother Vance to deliver Osiris a message. The message is, plant the seed. This is told to us in the Idol Tree lore entry. The web lore introduced very recently for Beyond Light hints that Osiris did in fact plant the seed. Have a listen, the web lore reads. Horticulture. Osiris has long wept over Io, mourning the death of a once lively world. The life left sleeping lay deep in the cradle, awaiting a wish to wake in the grove. On wings of flame and golden skein, the phoenix settled to deliver. Buried deep with flaming beak, a seed to blossom and draw watches hither. Sounds like Osiris planted the seed on Io. In Seasons of Arrivals, we work with Eris Morn at the Tree of Silver Wings that has grown on Io. In this area, there is an Easter egg, I guess, a coin that looks like what Brother Vance would wear, i.e. maybe this is a clue that Osiris was here and planted the seed on Io, and it grew into the Tree of Silver Wings. 
The reason why this would be important is because we get another seed from this tree, and this seed becomes the artifact for the season of arrivals. And we then infuse the seed with darkness, and Eris uses it to allow us to communicate with the darkness. Savathun and Nocris try to stop this communication. The significance of using the seed to communicate with the darkness is that this leads to beyond light and embracing stasis. So to put this together, maybe it was Marasov's plan all along to have Osiris plant the seed, which allowed us to communicate with the darkness, which becomes a catalyst for Guardians wielding stasis. Maybe Mara was trying to arm us with the darkness. Alternatively, maybe Osiris and Mara still have another seed, and therefore another way to communicate with the darkness. They could be using it in some sort of counterintelligence to the pyramid ships. And this brings me to my last point in Season of the Hunt. Marasov actually left us a message. Have a listen. To all corners of the system, I've emptied the armories on the fringe, sent Corsair warship fleets, deployed harbingers, and yet the Black Fleet persists. I know what it's taken from you, Petra. I've been away too long, and for that, I apologize. Your compassion and leadership have been a boon to me and our people. This all started with the Dreaming City. I shall return to finish it. <sighs> Savathun will be waiting. Marasov is coming back and I think we'll get a resolution to the Dreaming City curse and hopefully we'll get a showdown with the pyramid ships and of course Osiris sus behavior in Season of the Splicer should be explained. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. This is Marlin Games. Peace.